School of Management Distinguished Professor of Finance at MIT Sloan School of Management, and I won the 1997 Nobel Prize in Economic Sciences. Well, first I would point out that 10 days ago, Eugene Fama received the Nobel Prize for his work on the efficient markets, so at least the Nobel Committee seems to believe that it has a relevance. Uh, but more to my own views, I think it absolutely has a relevance for understanding, you know, at a core, how markets really work and uh, recognizing that, uh, you, know, you know, so many, I mean, there's so many implications for it. And I will tell you this as a practical matter, if we could teach our children from kindergarten to 12th grade, one rule, there's no free lunch, they would stay out of a lot of trouble. And by the way, during the crisis, mm -hmm. if overseers, if investment managers, if trustees had also believed there's no free lunch, they might have stayed out of some trouble. That, uh, uh, for example, uh, AAA, well, AAA means you don't really need to know what's going on because that's why it's AAA. So I'm not faulting those who bought AAA because they didn't understand underneath. What I would fault them for, though, is every week they got investments, AAA, whose yields were higher than they should be for AAA. Now, if, if it's too good to be true, it's probably not true. Why every week? Sure, once in a while by chance, accident, but every week to have sort of all the AAA you want at a higher than price. Now, my guess is people are pretty happy to get a higher in a minute, but that's when, I, that I would fall. And if you believe as a principle that the markets are pretty efficient, uh, you wouldn't fall into that trap. The other thing I would point out to you, here we have largest exchanges in the world being represented. If you look at trading on exchanges, Today, almost all of that is institutional. The markets we're looking at, government bond markets, swap markets, uh, derivatives markets, that's not uh, taxi drivers and ribbon clerks or you know, individuals trading, making those markets. Those are highly degree professionals, all right? Can they make mistakes? Absolutely. Can they do silly things? Absolutely. But they are very highly trained, highly regarded people. And so these are serious markets. And when one just says, oh, this is a bunch of fools don't know what they're doing, um, I think that's not a very scientifically uh, supportable view. Have, that doesn't mean you understand there haven't been disruptions in markets and so forth. That's a different issue. But, but I don't think the attribution of efficient markets in the context I use it uh, is really, uh, uh, you know, I think it's there. No theory, all, look, all models are abstractions from complex reality as are theories, and therefore incomplete. So I'm not suggesting that nowhere, no time is that the case. It's just that what would you propose as an alternative? Do you think someone sitting in their office, in either in government or in, in business, somehow know the right answer and the markets who are putting up all this money, the very professionals that are you see every day, they don't? I mean, that's my question back to you. It isn't that there aren't things that can be messed up. The question is, what do you put as an alternative? A, a, a someone who stands there and says, I know the right answer? I, I think that's, to my mind anyway, uh, something that needs a lot more evidence that can be done. And in fact, if you look at the markets that were at the core of what went on, they're some of the most highly regulated markets in the world. You have the financial ecosystem, and you have these things called hedge funds. And uh, what, what do I think is their role? Because in order to understand the answer to your question, you have to have an understanding of what I think their role is. If you look at hedge funds, the only common element to a hedge fund is slightly regulated. They do everything. They're in every market. They do everything. So it's slightly regulated. Now, why would you want to have a lightly regulated entity? And one of the things that I've, I've believed this for more than 20 years, I used to tell when I was in a hedge fund, I used to tell our investors that's what we were, that when you have all these 
institutions in the world trading in markets, and it's even more so as it's become more global and interconnected. You have them all trading. They're all subject to different rules and regulations, taxes and accounting. Now, those rules and regulations, are, let's just say they're all fine, but they're fixed rules, and so at different times under different conditions, they have unintended consequences. They cause banks or insurance companies or pension funds or endowments not to be able to do what they'd like to do, and which, by the way, would be perfectly fine with public policy. Do you understand? It's just, you know, it's an imperfection in the regulatory rules. There are a lot of them. And so at times, say, banks will find themselves being squeezed on, let's say, capital requirements, where it's not because that's what particularly the regulator wants, but there's something that binds there that's costly. If you could, through the markets, in some fashion, alleviate that constraint somewhat. The banks would pay for that. It's a service. It's an intermediation service. It alleviates a rigidity that they have. Do you understand? I believe that's what hedge funds do. Hedge funds are the other side. They are, are you like, intermediaries for the intermediaries. They are the intermediaries for banks. They're the intermediaries for insurance companies. Okay? Others can perform that role, but I'm saying that's what I think their role is. Prop trading desks are similar, they're a little different, but they're a similar function. The reason I bring that up is, if you didn't have them, something else would have to perform the function. And we saw a symptom of that in, during the crisis when the 10-year U.S. Treasury, the most liquid bond in the world, the swap spread went negative on that, which is crazy. Uh, that wasn't because they thought the U.S. was of worse credit than a money center bank. It was because that was a symptom of the financing of government, U.S. government bonds. That system wasn't working well, and that's what it was showing. That would not normally happen if hedge funds and prop trading desks were there because they would have stepped in before it got there. They were in disarray because funding of hedge funds during the crisis was cut way back. Dodd-Frank has sort of indicated that maybe the prop trading desk, so they were in disarray, and that's a symptom of what happens if you didn't have them working well. So I think hedge funds, as a category, I think that's their role. Uh, I don't mean that a hedge fund manager will tell you that's what they do, any more than a frog will tell you why they're, what their e e e role is in the ecosystem. So, um, you know, are they a particular risk? Well, they're part of the financial system, so of course. But I don't, I mean, I don't see them as disappearing. And if they did, let's say somehow globally we legislated so they can't do it, we'd have to find some substitute for them. 